Today's video is brought to you by the subscribe button and the notification bell. Don't forget to click both of them down below. Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and I hope you all had a great weekend. Today we're going to be kicking off the week by talking about SSDs and whether or not it is safe to buy a cheaper SSD because prices are coming down so much. We're going to talk about why that is and also, you know, some of the drawbacks of buying a cheaper, more affordable SSD. But before we get into everything, I just want to quickly address the injury to my nose as I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of comments down below if I don't talk about it. Uh, basically, allergy season is kicking off right now. Pollen count is really high over the weekend. And when my allergies get really bad with my nose, I tend to rub my nose a lot and I ended up taking off like an entire layer of skin. So that's really all there is to it. Really bad allergies led to um, this injury on my face. And I've got some antibiotic ointment on it right now, so it might look a little shiny. Um, so just wanted to address that quickly before there's any comments down below. If you suffer from allergies and you've ever had something like this, let me know down in the comments. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about affordable SSDs. First, let's talk about why SSDs are getting cheaper. Now, obviously, there's um, obviously the reason is the uh, one reason is that there are more manufacturers producing um, flash storage right now. But another one is the advent of QLC, which basically what that boils down to is that you are able to have more bits on a single cell, which ends up making the production of it a lot cheaper. So SSD prices have come down considerably. If you look at this chart right here, you can see with, you know, in the beginning, SSDs were super expensive. That's when we were using SLC, which is single. Then we went to multi, triple, and then finally QLC, quad LC, which is, you know, kind of what we're starting to see now at the more affordable range. So just taking a quick look on Amazon, and I'll have links down below to all the SSDs we talk about here in this video over to Amazon. Um, you can see right here, here's like a Crucial MX500. This is a SATA M.2 SSD, one terabyte that sells for $120. And down here you could see an NVMe drive, which would be considerably faster. NVMe drives compared to SATA M.2 drives are usually anywhere from like three to five times faster, sometimes even more than that. And it's actually selling for the same exact price. I'm currently using one of these for my C drive, so my boot drive on my main PC with the 9900K, and I've been using it for about six months now. My boot speeds have never been faster, so speed is not really a drawback when it comes to using QLC, although you might find some more expensive drives that are not QLC that can be faster, like 970 Pros, but really the biggest issue that we need to talk about here in this video is write endurance. That is really going to be the biggest caveat with buying a cheaper M.2 or SSD drive for your PC is just how long they're going to be able to last because they actually do have a finite number of writes that you can have to your SSD and it is going to vary based on the different brand or different model of SSD or M.2 NVMe drive that you choose to pick up. So this particular crucial one terabyte NVMe drive that I'm currently using in my main system as a boot drive has 200 terabytes of total write endurance. So once I've written a total of 200 terabytes to this drive, it will very likely cease to function at that point or very shortly, maybe before, or shortly after that period of time, which um, comparatively to something like a much more expensive SSD uh, or M.2 NVMe drive, one of the best ones on the market that you can get currently is the Samsung 970 Pro. That one can actually do 1200 terabytes. So that is considerably more than what you can do on the crucial one terabyte drive, but the price is also reflecting that. As you can see, this is selling for $332 versus the crucial NVMe drive, which is $120. So obviously it is going to last you much, much longer, but how much of that is, is, is it really going to uh, affect you? Obviously, if you're, if you're doing a much more professional workload, you could, um, you know, run, it could die a little bit faster, but still just how long is it actually going to take for that end of life to come up. So you can actually check your current rights on any drive that you have in your system. I'm gonna leave a link to this down in the description below. This is called Crystal Disk Info. It's a very safe piece of software that you can use. Um, and as you can see over here on Amazon, I bought this drive just back in December, on December 11th, and I started using it in January or late, it was either January or late December when I actually built my 9900K system. And as you can see on the C drive up until this point in time, in just about six months, I've only written 2,735 gigabytes. So 
not really all that much. Let's take a look at one of my other drives, which I use a lot more, the H drive. This is my main scratch disk. So anytime I record a video like the one I'm doing right now, I will go ahead and I will take those files. I will put them onto this SSD. This is just a standard 2.5 inch SSD. I'll go ahead and put the files on there and work off of there because it's going to be faster than a mechanical storage. And then when I'm done with that file, if it's like a, if it's like a, if it has a lot of B-roll or something, I'll probably save that to a mechanical drive. But if not, I'm probably end, going to end up deleting it. So there's a lot of files being written to this and then taken away. And up until right now, I've done a total of 7,005 gigabytes. And this one uh, actually has 436 terabytes of a lifespan of total write, writing that it can do. Another drive which I use a lot is my G drive. This is another one that has uh, 400 terabytes of total writes that it can do. Um, and as you can see right now, I've done around 25,000 gigabytes. So this is the most used drive that I have on my system. I've been using it since uh, around Christmas 2015. So a little bit over three years now. I've been using this drive and up until now it's only gotten 25,000 gigabytes out of the 400,000 that it can actually take. So let's go ahead and break that down on a calculator and figure out how long exactly this drive will last me if I continue to use it as, as, at its current rate. So as I said, um, let's chalk, let's round this up to 25,000 and I've been using it, I've been using it for a little over three years, but let's just say three years um, for, for, for argument's sake. So we'll do it at 25,000, which is currently what it's written and we'll go ahead and divide that by three which would mean I'm using currently 8,333 gigabytes per year and as I said this particular drive can do 400 terabytes which would be 400,000 gigabytes so if we go ahead and clear that out we'll do 400,000 and we'll divide that by the amount I'm using per year which is 8,333 8333 dot three we'll go ahead and check that and at the current rate my cheap sandisk ssd which only cost me 200 dollars at the time and you can currently find those for a hundred dollars would last me 48 years so i think that it's going to prop it might last longer than i actually survive being on the planet earth um, at the current rate of use that i am getting out of this ssd so as you can see, this thing is going to last me a considerable amount of time. So um, I know 200 terabytes or 400 terabytes might not sound like a lot compared to something like the Samsung, but it's obviously going to last me a very long time, even with the heavy amount of use that it gets writing massive game files to this particular drive. Now, what prompted me to making this video is that I just picked up yesterday, um, I picked up three of these um, two terabyte uh, NVMe drives. These are the Intel 660Ps. They're currently, um, besides some non-name brands, they're basically the cheapest NVMe M.2 drives that you can actually get. I bought three of them because I already have one in another system, which I'm going to be repurposing into a new Ryzen system because it's using PCI Gen 4. I'm going to end up sticking four of these into that system using a PCI expansion card. This is the uh, PCI expansion card I'm gonna end up using. As you can see, it's $66, so nothing crazy. And basically what this allows you to do is you can go ahead and stick four, you can see one, two, three, four M.2 drives on this PCI card. Uh, it even has a fan on it to help keep your M.2 drives cool. And that is going to go into my new Ryzen 9 3900X system, the 12 core beast that um, is gonna be shipping in early July. And I'm expecting to probably, I mean, I haven't heard anything from AMD, but I'm just, I'm, I'm expecting them to probably start sending samples out to reviewers um, by the end of June or very, very early on in July to give us enough time to test before the processors are actually released. And once I have that, I'm going to put it into my new Ryzen 9 system, which will become my full-time gaming and video editing system. So I wanna have as much storage as possible. And with four two terabyte drives, that means I'll be able to put eight terabytes of NVMe storage on this thing for a pretty darn cheap price as the Intel 660Ps, uh, the two terabyte models sell for just under $200. You can get the one terabytes actually for $105 right now over on Amazon. So super duper cheap, but these only have 200 terabytes of, uh, of write endurance. So it's kind of low. 
but based on the uh, my other scratch disc, which we determined is gonna last me around 40 years at the current rate, and this one will probably last me about 20 years if I continue using these drives at the rate that I'm using them right now for a scratch disc and writing massive 4K RAW files to these drives, which is pretty much like one of the most intensive use case scenarios um, you know, you can find for one of these drives is writing massive 4K files um, constantly and then removing them and putting new ones on. So I really use these drives a lot, so I need them to be reliable and last, but I honestly have no concerns whatsoever. And even compared to like the 970 Pro, the read and write speeds of these things are extremely fast and plenty for what I am personally doing. And I actually realized I just uh, kind of made a little bit of a mistake here. I was looking at the specs for the Intel 660p and the two terabytes actually do have 400 terabytes of write endurance. The one terabyte are the one that have 200 terabytes of write endurance. So as you can see uh, over here on Anantech, they include these specifications in all of their M.2 and SSD reviews, the write endurance numbers. Um, so even for a one terabyte, which like I said, you can get those right now for $105. Again, link will be down in the description below. These things are very fast. As you can see, the sequential read and write is around 1800 megabytes per second. My PC boots instantaneously on my crucial NVMe drive, which is around the same exact speed. It's within maybe like a hundred megabytes or so. Um, my PC boots stupid fast and using these for video editing is going to be incredibly valuable to me. And now you probably don't need that blazing speed to load things like games if you're only going to be using it for gaming. Um, but at the current prices, there's really no reason not to get one of these. As I said, a one terabyte drive you can get for $105. And any other SSD that you're thinking about picking up, before you, before you buy it, you go ahead and just Google the model number and the right endurance, and you should be able to find that statistic very easily um, on either a review, a review website like Anantech or the manufacturer's website. So really, I think what the takeaway should be from this is that you should not be afraid of buying cheaper SSDs. Yes, you're going to get more write endurance on a drive that will cost two to three times more, like say the 970 Pro NVMe drive, but a drive like this, like the 660p, which I got for 200 bucks for the two terabyte, it could hypothetically last me around 40 years in terms of just the write endurance. Now, I, there could be mechanical failures or something like that um, before that comes, but really the major concern with QLC is write endurance because it has a finite number of writes as any SSD has a finite number of writes when it comes to flash storage. Um, but yeah, like 20 to 40 years, I think I'm golden. I mean, if this thing breaks in 20 years and I get 20 years out of it, I'm gonna be pretty happy. And I'm pretty sure before that time comes, there'll probably be newer, faster, better technology than whatever's on this drive that I'll probably end up upgrading to long before this thing sees its end of life just because of write endurance. So I hope that this maybe kind of cleared up that for you. If you were thinking about picking up a cheap SSD and you were concerned about buying one of the more affordable drives out there, um, if you have any questions or concerns or just feedback you want to give on the video, please leave it down in the comments below. I do look forward to that interaction and reading through your guys' comments. Um, as I said at the start, any of the drives I talked about in this video, like the Crucial Drive, uh, the Intel SSD, the Samsung uh, 970 Pro, as well as the Evo Plus, which we didn't get around to talking about in this video, but it's also a good drive, but it's like kind of the middle of the road drive, the Evo Plus. It's around $250, I believe, for a one terabyte, so it's kind of sits somewhere between the more affordable QLC drives of the 660p and the super fast, um, much more lo longer endurance drives like the 970 Pro. It kind of sits right there in the middle. Um, so I'll have links to all the drives down in the description if you want to go ahead and check those out. They are affiliate links, so I do get a small kickback if you decide to buy anything over there. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here and nurse my little nose boo-boo. And I uh, hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow for another video. It's all right.